Here we have multinodularity, a very lobulated lesion, and there's a, a large component of round blue cells in the background. And these round blue cells are lymphocytes, and there are clustered blood vessels with very thick, plump endothelial cells. And in some areas, they almost look solid. If you, you, know, you might have trouble distinguishing that as a vascular space because the lumen can be so compressed by the, the size of the endothelial cells. And of course, in the background, you have lots of eosinophils. So many of you already know that this is angiolymphoid hyperplasia with, eosin, uh, with eosinophils um, or epithelioid hemangioma. But when you have a small biopsy of an area that looks like this, it can be very challenging because the cells are so epithelioid and plump, and you might have trouble recognizing vascular spaces. So you can get concerned seeing that, that maybe you're dealing with an angiosarcoma or something worse. Um, and again, the, uh, the cells have an epithelioid appearance and tend to kind of push in and hobnail into the vessel lumen. I don't like to use the word hobnail too often because it gets, it, it's too much of a buzzword. It confuses people. But you can have hobnailed looking cells in many different vascular lesions. So don't get too worried about that. But they tend to, to push into the vascular lumen like that. And um, sometimes the inflammation can be relatively sparse, and sometimes eosinophils are very scarce. And so in cases like that, when you don't have much of the infiltrate there, it can be challenging to make the diagnosis. And oftentimes, um, uh, this lesion will arise from a damaged blood vessel, particularly the temporal artery. So the, the um, temporal region of the head is a very common site for this, and oftentimes, if you're lucky, you'll find a damaged, thick-walled vessel um, from which the proliferation is growing, and that's a useful clue to the diagnosis. Here's the vessel wall, here's the kind of a proliferation within the vessel, and then extending outside the vessel here. So this is uh, the term that I like to use is epithelioid hemangioma. In dermatopathology, we often call it ALAG for angiolymphoid hyperplasia with eosinophilia. And we talked about all of this already, but you can review it again later. Um, uh, one thing I'll point out, we don't, we don't have a picture of it here, but the penile type of um, epithelial hemangioma can look very cellular and atypical and can easily get confused with angiosarcoma. And uh, for obvious reasons, um, it's it really important to not misdiagnose angiosarcoma on the penis because it can result in um, uh, irreversible, terrible surgical complications. So very important to know that there is, if you see a weird vascular lesion on the penis, always consider the possibility of, of an epithelioid hemangioma that's, that's um, looking atypical because of, because of its unique subtype there. So that's an important lesion to be aware of. 